Hello and welcome to the third video on the HobbyZone uh, Carbon Cub, the 1.3 meter limited edition model. And we have it out of the box, we have it all assembled, everything is good to go and you're ready to go to the flying field, but there's a few more steps that I highly recommend you take before you put the aircraft into the air. And these are these kind of like little last minute checks that you want to do, just kind of a pre-flight to make sure everything is set and this will give you the maximum chance of success with your airplane. You'd hate to go out on your very first flight and find out that you had the center of gravity wrong or you had an aileron out of trim or an elevator out of trim. You had something wrong with the aircraft that you could have caught from the beginning if you just take a few steps and check over everything before the aircraft goes into the air. And so this video is really all about all those little checks that you want to do to make sure that the aircraft is ready to go and you've done everything possible to give you the maximum amount of success, which is really what you want to have. You want to make sure this aircraft comes, goes to the field and comes back home again looking just as awesome as it does today. So a few things we're going to need to do that. First of all, we will need the, uh, the flight manual because the center of gravity um, is listed inside the uh, flight manual and we're going to want to read that and reference that when we do the center of gravity check. Um, I got a pair of uh, Phillips screwdrivers here because I do want to go through and just verify that all the fasteners are tightened and ready to go. I also have a straight edge and uh, you can use a credit card, um, you can use a ruler, straight edge, you can use anything as long as it is straight because we're going to use this to check over all of our surfaces to make sure they are all aligned before we go in the air. We also have our 2200 uh, 3S Gen 2 battery. This has been charged and ready to go. I just got done charging it. And this is actually the very first time I've used one of the new Spectrum Gen 2 smart batteries. Of course, this requires a smart charger, which I have. Um, I have to say, every, you know, Everybody tells me that once you go to a Gen 2 battery, you'll never want to go back to a Gen 1 with the balance lead, and they are right. It was awesome. I just simply plug this into my charger, one plug, good to go, the charger battery, they take care of everything for you, um, charge up the pack, and I say, man, that is pretty nice. No more having to deal with that balance plug. So if you've not checked out the Spectrum Gen 2 batteries, uh, please do so. You will be... Uh, very thankful uh, once you try them because they are actually really awesome. So this is the first time giving them a, uh, a chance. So we'll also want to make sure that we have the um, the Spectrum DXS uh, transmitter that came with the aircraft and then we also want to make sure that we have our batteries installed which they are. So we have everything we need um, except for, well, everything that's on the table, except for the uh, CG machine. I'm gonna be using the Dubro CG machine to check the center of gravity. You can use, uh, you can use your fingertips. Uh, you can kind of make stuff up to uh, support the aircraft, but I highly recommend if you're gonna stick with this hobby to buy a CG machine. And so and with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the manual. Let's take a look at uh, what the center of gravity is listed for this aircraft. And it is on page 12 here. And what it does is it's going to list the center of gravity as a measurement from the leading edge of the wing. So this is the leading edge of the wing. It's going to measure that back 62 to 68 millimeters or 2.4 to 2.7 inches from the, uh, from the leading edge of the wing. Um, and they give you a range because there is a range of acceptability with the center of gravity. If you want to fly uh, a little bit more, if you want a little bit more sporty, aerobatic type feel to the aircraft, um, you can want to slide the battery rearward and you actually kind of give yourself a more rearward center of gravity as a result. And that will give you a little bit more pitch authority. For a beginner, I highly recommend sticking at the middle to the front half of the range, which would be like 62 to uh, 65 millimeters from the front. So we're gonna set our um, CG machine to 65 millimeters, and then we are gonna install the battery. We are not gonna power the aircraft up. We're simply gonna put the battery in the battery tray and um, balance the aircraft that way. So with that said, I'm gonna go grab the, um, the CG machine, put it on the, uh, the bench here, and let's get ready to um, check the center of gravity on this Hobby Zone Carbon Cup. So give me one second. 
All right, so we have the uh, CG machine here sitting on the, uh, the bench. It is 65 millimeters from this leading edge here to the indicator. And then we're gonna put the leading edge of the wing here, balance the aircraft on this pad. And if it balances properly, you'll see the aircraft will be perfectly level on top of this CG machine. So with that said, let's go ahead and drop the battery in, shall we? And to do so, I'm going to center the battery pretty much right in the middle of the, uh, the tray here as a starting point. And I'm going to secure the battery, and then we're going to see where it balances at and adjust this fore or aft to get our CG right where we want it, okay? So let me go ahead and, uh, and do that. Okay, we have the, the battery is centered pretty much in the middle of the uh, tray here. It is not plugged in. It's just resting in here. Um, I did use the uh, strap to... Uh, retain the, the, uh, the battery, you do want to put the Velcro um, on the bottom of the battery that will adhere to the Velcro that's pre-installed from the factory that's on the, um, on the fuselage inside the battery tray here. Uh, that will keep it from shifting back and forth. But for now, we actually want to keep it loose so that we can shift it back and forth in order to balance the aircraft properly, okay? So let's go ahead and set this on the CG machine here, set to 65 uh, millimeters. So, all right, let me get this nice and centered up here. Slide the aircraft in and get it down on the um, pads. So, here we go. Let me get the uh, side here closest to the camera. Got to watch out for the, um, the struts here to make sure they don't interfere. And, wow, look at that. I would say, <laughs> look at that, that is 100% perfectly straight out of the box. That is perfectly level. If you were to put a level on that horizontal stabulator, you will see that it is perfectly flat to the ground. I've done enough of these where I can kind of eyeball it and take a look and say, wow, that is dead on. So 2200 3S smart gen two pack on this particular aircraft, the battery is precisely centered inside the battery tray. Now, the key is, is that it's centered on this particular aircraft. Every airplane is a little different. In fact, I have two Cherokees that the battery placement is different between the two of them and they balance the same with the same battery. The reason is, is because there's slight variation in the foam densities, there's slight variation in the paint thickness, there's just these tiny little things that add up. And that can mean that your center of gravity position for the, you know, where the battery's position for the center of gravity may be different than it is on mine. But I always recommend start in the center of the battery tray and then shift it back and forth accordingly. I put it in the center on this one and it is spot on balanced right out of the box. So beautiful. Um, also, I'm not used to having an airplane that balances so perfect out of the box because I paint all my airplanes. And by painting the airplanes and modifying them, I have all sorts of changes that I've done that can cause the center of gravity to be very different than one completely out of the box. But I'm not touching this one. It is good to go. So let's go ahead and take it off the CG machine here. There we go. And let's, uh, we'll mark the battery position as such with a permanent marker. So let me go grab a permanent marker to do that. And I'll be right back with uh, the next step, which is to power the aircraft up and make sure that all of our control surfaces not only move correctly, they are centered properly. We will check AS3X and we'll check safe. So I'll be right back after I grab those things. All right, so I have a permanent marker and I've moved the uh, CG machine uh, off the, uh, the bench here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and take my permanent marker and I'm gonna mark on here where that leading edge of the battery should be so that when I go to put it in again to fly it, I always get it in the exact right spot, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna actually mark it, uh, mark it here. Then for good luck, I'm just gonna mark it back here too, just as an extra visual. Here we go. This aircraft will only fly on a 2200 3S. I don't have any plans to fly any other batteries with it. But if I was gonna fly another battery, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, a 1300, 1800, whatever battery I wanted to fly it in, you'll have to recheck your center of gravity and put another line on there to know where the CG is for that particular battery. So this aircraft is only gonna be flown on these 2200 3S Gen 2 batteries. So because of that, I only have to put one mark on here and know that that mark will always be good for these batteries in this plane. Okay, 
So with that said, let's go ahead and get the uh, transmitter uh, powered up, shall we? This is also where it's nice to have a, uh, something to place the airplane on other than this table. Normally I have my, uh, my little stands, but they're uh, all occupied at the moment. So, all right. So uh, a couple things here. Step one, always make sure that you power on your transmitter before ever powering on the aircraft. Always make sure that your throttle position is fully down and your throttle cut, which is this H switch in this back corner here, is activated. So we have throttle down, throttle cut is on. I also wanna double check the, uh, the trims on the uh, transmitter here to make sure they're all neutral. So if you listen, there'll be some beeps. Okay, that's centered, centered, centered. This one I'm gonna put all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna keep, start with my uh, throttle trim all the way down, just as a kind of a safety precaution here. Then I'm gonna bump it back up to the neutral point and I'm gonna leave it at the neutral point uh, from there. But we know that the rest of the, surf, the, rest of the uh, controls on here are all zeroed out on their trim. That's gonna be important because we're gonna check the surfaces and when we do that, we wanna make sure that there's no transmitter trim that's in the aircraft uh, and then we're gonna check to make sure there's no mechanical trim. We'll go fly the airplane and we'll use these to trim the aircraft in the air. And then we, if there are any trims, we will then come back and transfer the trims from the transmitter to the actual aircraft with a mechanical trim. For the most part, it's pretty rare I need to do that anymore. The quality control has been so good on a lot of the airplanes that I've got that um, maybe one or two clicks of trim is all that's needed. And for that little bit of trim, you don't have to really worry about making any adjustments on the aircraft. All right, so we have the, uh, the transmitters powered up. Now, this is a case of uh, do as I, uh, as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna be leaving the prop installed. If this is the first time powering up the aircraft, I highly su suggest you remove the prop. This has already been powered up once before. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the, uh, the prop on because I've already tested the aircraft uh, with it. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the, uh, the battery in. I'm just gonna reach down underneath the uh, fuselage here and, uh, and do that. All right, the aircraft is powering up, battery is plugged in, so we'll let it sit for a moment. Okay. It's gonna do its checks. We're good to go. All right, so like I said, if you have a stand to put this on, uh, much easier to work with uh, when you have to have battery that glows underneath. A lot of my aircraft batteries didn't go in from the top. You could do it without having to have a um, kind of a, uh, a stand to keep the aircraft on, but uh, it is easier to have a stand for high wing aircraft the batteries go in from the bottom. So a couple things to note here. We have the red light uh, turned on down there, which tells me that it should be in experience mode, if I remember correctly. And then it will go into blue, which is our intermediate mode. And then green is our safe mode. And that is the B button right here on the top. And you can see if I change, the elevator also moves when I do that. So we'll get into that more in a second. But I wanna make sure for um, checking all the services out that I'm in an experienced mode and not in beginner mode. And the reason is because beginner and intermediate mode dial in some up elevator um, as part of their programming. And I don't wanna make any adjustments to what the factory recommends for safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into experience mode. I have red light on there. The elevator has flattened itself back out again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and um, check with a straight edge just to make sure that all these surfaces are indeed good. And to do this, I just simply lay the, the straight edge over the top of the surface and check it. And then I will come in and check on the bottom as well. Okay, can good. And then I'll take a look just as an extra precaution. I'll kind of lay the straight edge on the side here. Boy, that is pretty good. That's looking pretty good. And I'll check underneath. Now, if anything, it looks like maybe we got a little bit of, move, of adjustment to make here on the uh, um, aileron here on the right side aileron looks like it might need just a little bit of an adjustment. So let me check the, uh, the left side and to do this, once again, it's a little bit easier on the flat side of the wing. I'm just gonna take my straight edge, I'm gonna put it underneath and look at it and you can see, there we go. This side actually looks pretty well 
aligned. This one looks like it may be down just a tiny bit, but it's enough that I'm going to say, you know what? I think for the small amount of, uh, of, of daylight I can see when I put the straight edge under there, that it's probably pretty close. Uh, if I get in the air and I notice that the aircraft wants to bank, um, either left or right, I'll make some trims on the transmitter and then we'll go through and, and change it. But I'm not seeing anything of concern with the aileron trim. Do the same thing here with the straight edge on the elevator, that looks good. While the elevator only, um, you can't really adjust it independently, I do check both sides just in case there's any warp in the horizontal stabulator and the elevator. And that looks really nice and flat, check that again. And then I'll come over the top and I'll check uh, the rudder. Rudder looks good. Yeah, all right, so from a uh, straight edge perspective, everything looks pretty well aligned. Like I said, maybe a little bit of adjustment on the uh, the right right aileron here. So if I think what it's gonna end up doing is because it's a little, it's a little up on this side, it may try to bank a little bit um, to the right because we'll have a little bit of the lift being spoiled on this particular side compared to that side. We'll get in the air and find out. So with that, I wanna go ahead now and point the aircraft um, away from me. And I want to check the control surfaces. And I always try to do this from the back of the airplane, okay? So I got my transmitter, we're powered up here, and I'm gonna take a look at right aileron, right? So I go right aileron, okay, right aileron. Right aileron goes up, left goes down. And then I'm gonna go Left aileron goes up, right goes down. See, do that. And to make it a little bit easier for you guys at home to see, I'm actually gonna pitch the aircraft up and show you that we have right, left, right, left. Okay, and while we have it up in the air like this, I'm gonna pull back on the, uh, the elevator stick. So I'm gonna pull this back and the elevator should go up. And then I'm gonna push it down and the elevator should go down. So we have good movement of the elevator. And then while I have it up here, I'm also going to do the rudder. So I go right rudder, left rudder, right rudder. Yep. Okay, everything looked good. Okay, so let's kind of do a make sure all the control services are nice and free uh, before we actually go through any further. So control services all check out okay. Now I am going to um, check the throttle because you need to advance the throttle to 25% in order to turn on AS3X and save. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna hold the aircraft and turn off the throttle cut, okay? And now I am going to move the throttle trim to zero. And there is the beep, so good. So the throttle never moved, um, so the prop didn't spin or anything. Now all the trims have been neutralized. And for that, I'm gonna hold the aircraft, so I got the back of the aircraft here, and I'm gonna throttle it up to 25%, okay? And there we go, so it definitely moves some air, right? Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and move the throttle cut to now, uh, throttle is cut, and I'm gonna check that. Yep, see, move the throttle, nothing happens. So from a safety standpoint, always make sure your throttle is set. So with that, now I'm gonna check AS3X. And to do that, I'm going to lift the right side of the wing up and see, does it want to move the, um, move the aileron upward, okay? So I'm gonna close the uh, battery hatch here, it's flopping around, okay? Okay, all right, so I got the aircraft sitting like this and I'm gonna tip the aircraft up. And I watch and say, yep, I have the, so whatever end of the aircraft you lift up, the that control surface will lift. So you can actually lay your hand on top of it and pivot the aircraft up and you say, yep, it's going up. And then if it goes down, it should go down, right? Because that's AS3X, it's gonna counteract what the aircraft is doing. So let's move this up. Yep, good, feel the bottom. Good, and there we go. Um, so that is set. So we know AS3X is functioning properly. I'm gonna go into um, uh, beginner mode here. Okay, we have green light on the uh, the canopy and the uh, elevator moved in the, uh, the down position here. So it moved just a little bit down. And for this, now we're gonna find out what happens if you pivot the aircraft. Um, you can see 
the uh, I'll move the aircraft around, but I'm already checking it from here and I can see that by pivoting the aircraft up this way, this aileron has gone up, that aileron has gone down, which is safe trying to level the aircraft right back out again. Okay, and we're gonna do the same here for the elevator. So let's say, oh, it's pitching down. The elevator says, all right, I am going to go upward and bring the aircraft back. If it's going up like this into a high pitch, it's gonna try to level the aircraft back out by adding down elevator, okay? And you can do the same here for the, uh, the rudder as well. So with this, I am gonna demonstrate from the back of the aircraft, I want you to watch what the ailerons do, okay? You can see as I go into a bank, this side uh, goes down, that side goes up. It is trying to get the aircraft back center again. I want you to watch the, uh, the elevator. You can see that it goes up, elevator goes down. Okay, so with that, I would say we have uh, AS3X has been checked, safe has been checked, center of gravity has been checked, throttle cut is operational, uh, all the control services move, everything is looking good. The very last step is simply, um, you don't have to have it powered on to do this at all. In fact, it's probably safer to make sure that it is not powered and turned off. You simply take your screwdrivers and just go through, check that each one of your screws that hold the, uh, the wing on, the wing struts and the vertical stabulator and horizontal stabulator and the landing gear are all tight. And with that, you've now done everything needed to maximize your chance of success and to get this airplane in the air and back down to ground again, knowing you've done all your pre-flight uh, checks. If you guys got any questions at all, please leave them in your comments below. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer them. And our next step now is to go ahead and get this incredible airplane in the air. So if you wanna see more uh, concerning the, uh, the Carbon Cub uh, or you like the content you see, by all means, make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for uh, more future videos.